So my name is Daryl Murphy, and I work for the National Reconnaissance Office. And so my role within the NRO is a counterintelligence officer for the Office of Security and Counterintelligence. Uh, and what we do, we have a huge mission across our entire directorate, is to um, secure all this high-tech uh, programs and technology from our foreign adversaries. And so it's a very dynamic uh, uh, career field, and it has worldwide challenges for us to deal with every day. So the National Reconnaissance Office, or the NRO, is the government agency uh, that uh, designs builds, manages uh, all the overhead satellites for the, the uh, intelligence community. So I chose my career within the NRO uh, based on my military career. I was uh, hired, or I was actually selected to be an Air Force Office of Special Investigations Special Agent, and through that I worked in counterintelligence. And counterintelligence is basically countering our foreign adversaries, targeting of our people, personnel, technologies, and programs. And so I, my first assignment with them was with Vandenberg Air Force Base, which was, uh, I didn't know at the time, but was where we did space launch. My first space launch actually happened, uh, I would say organically, because I was living in military housing on base, and my daughter, um, Tori, was actually out in the yard playing, and the ground shakes, and so we thought it was an earthquake. She comes in yelling, Dad, earthquake and so we didn't know I mean literally the ground was shaking and so I go out to kind of see what's going on as it, as it started to subside and you could see a bright light off in the distance and it was actually a rocket had taken off it was from a Titan IV uh, rocket and so I was just astounded by seeing this big majestic thing go up and that's kind of my first real you know imagination of space kind of got to me from there. I, I would have never thought I would work in the aerospace industry. I'm from a very small town in Missouri. Um, I wasn't even a very good student. Um, some of my teachers would, would have probably said I was an underperformer. They always said I'm much more smarter if I would just apply myself. Um, and so anyway, through uh, um, I went to college, which didn't work out so well for me, and then I joined the military, and uh, through my military career is where I ended up working in the aerospace industry. So I was a member of the, of the Air Force, and I came in at, at 19 years of age, and I was totally, didn't know what I wanted to do with the world. And the, the Air Force helped, to, helped me to grow up and to realize that the world's much bigger than just me. And there's lots of things that I could, was exposed to while I was in the military. What makes me love my job is that every day I'm amazed by the new technologies and the new uh, innovations that the NRO and the, and the space community at large is, is uh, developing. It's amazing that even young people, uh, sometimes the most young people, are, have the biggest ideas about what we can do. And so uh, that's what amazes me the most. It's, it's always ever-changing, it's fast-paced, it's the most, one of the most high-tech uh, fields in the world that you'll ever get an opportunity to work in. And um, so just the everyday challenges of the changes in technology. The NRO starts to uh, recruit people in the college. Uh, we don't actually have a high school uh, intern program yet, but I do believe or I hope that someday we may uh, go down that path. Uh, some of the other government agencies do that, but we do not at this point have uh, high school kids, but um, hopefully someday we will. If you want to dream big and, and go into aerospace, um, you have to have a strong foundation of math and science. Uh, it is so vitally important. My wife is a school teacher, as a matter of fact, she teaches math and at the high school and at the middle school level. And she'd always talked about how kids always ask the question, what does this mean to me and why do I have to do this? And trying to equate worldwide, uh, real world uh, you know, problems into a high school setting is always a challenge. Well, we talk about it, and actually I come from a family of teachers. My sister's a teacher, my sister-in-law is a teacher. Anyway, we talk about what is the importance of you know, math. And I say every day I'm around the most smart people in the world, and they, they go through all these highly complex math computations, et cetera, uh, to develop space technology and to understand um, physics and all those things you've been learning in high school. 
As a counterintelligence officer for the NRO, uh, my job is to um, work with our law enforcement and security counterparts to protect our space technology. Um, it's a very dynamic uh, career field because we uh, work hand in hand with all, all government agencies to protect our technology. And so um, while it's not quite like spy versus spy you see in the movies, um, it is very, a very challenging and very um, dynamic career field. I get challenged every day. Uh, and that's why it's so unique about the NRO and the space industry. There's not a day that doesn't go by that I'm not challenged based on um, worldwide threats, based on new technology, based on trying to protect that technology, and based on trying to uh, even understand the technology. Because uh, most of my law enforcement counterparts from like the FBI and the other agencies are not aerospace focused. They, they don't understand it. As a matter of fact, when I went through counterintelligence training, which we all have, the first thing they'll tell you is, this, it's not rocket science, guys. Well, this is rocket science. So a lot of what I do is to help educate my law enforcement counterparts on what space is and those challenges. My job couldn't be done without collaboration. Literally, um, I am collaborating with people every day. I communicate with people from around the globe sometimes based on um, worldwide threats, based on um, just understanding technology sometimes. So collaboration is of the utmost importance, not just in my career field, but all across the aerospace industry. I think if you talk to anyone working in aerospace, they'd say that it doesn't happen, or maybe it does happen in a vacuum, but they would probably say that anyway. I, I think that what motivates me and what I think motivates uh, my organization, people that work for us, is understanding the importance of it to national defense and to protect our way of life. Um, I think it's a calling, like, like most career fields are. Um, and so I would say I get motivated every day by trying to protect uh, the loved ones that I have in, in my life. Oh my goodness, I mean, the stars, I mean, the stars are the limit. I mean, I, I can't even imagine what it'll be like, you know, 10, 15, 20, 50 years from now, because the vastness of space is so big and there's so many things we have to conquer, or should we overcome, so many challenges. Literally, it's unlimited based on where space is and where it's going. Um, it's unlimited potential, unlimited innovation. Any idea to further that is just gonna further technology and it's so fast paced that um, the opportunities for someone that's very young to start to understand space and to understand physics and understand all the key core STEM career uh, uh, classes uh, is so important to them now. Um, so that's, that's what I would say. The most important thing for, I would say, kids to understand is that life goes by very quickly. Um, I know when you're young and you think that I got plenty of time and that tomorrow I can start my life, the reality is, every day you're alive, your window starts to close. And never, ever, ever miss an opportunity to advance yourself. That's what I would say. And um, kids that are, are now thinking about what do I want to do 5, 10, 15 years from now, imagine the stars and where you could do with that. Uh, other things I would talk to young people about too, or, or to high school students, is that um, the future of space is so very exciting. And if you ever want to think about space and what can I do with it, everybody has a cell phone. I know because my teacher tells me, my wife tells me, excuse me, my wife tells me all the time how kids got their cell phones buried in their face. And they should realize that all the data that's tied to that cell phone likely comes from a satellite. Satellites hundreds to thousands of miles in space is beamed down through multiple different you know, technologies, but it literally comes to their hand every day. And every day they get more and more information fed to them. They should always think about, wow, how did this happen? It happened from a satellite. Um, and, and the future careers within the NRO, and even in the aerospace industry is bright. Um, right now the aerospace industry, and in particular the NRO, is really seeking out uh, minorities and women to further our ranks. Um, it is very important and very vital to the uh, overall um, health of the organization. So 
Um, that's where we are focusing currently on, is trying to increase the numbers of minorities and women within our, our ranks. You know, I will tell you that with regard to space, the entrepreneurial spirit is probably bigger than any other field. If you think about like Elon Musk, who would have ever thought that he would be able to develop a space launch company and now he's putting space aircraft in, aircraft in space. So uh, when you think about ideas and entrepreneurship, um, space is the place to be. Uh, not only will you make a good salary, but you'll also change the world.